today, if they're fielding him, that is. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. Plane path from Hatin over towards Campon for our first match. Yeah, drop. to get a chance of a real roundy. We do already have Ooh. this fight that happens every single time in boot camp. It's FaZe Clan versus D-plus Kia. Saiden knocked and a second as well, sent back out towards Forest, but Meller is super low behind that corner. Can't peek out for the flush just yet. Fovian, bullets, weapons, sure. Not really too much to speak of in terms of armor though, so needs to stay careful, wary. Osal. Close to getting that res for Forrest. Saden still has a little bit of time. Mela absolutely red here. Ventura's has got that helmet. And Mela might just be going a little bit too bold. Getting on the inside, Fabian peeks out. Position given away. FaZe have already lost a player, and that's what you want. Fabian finds the mark. And all four players for D plus Kia are alive still. Saden resable, but that time is ticking away. Ventura's. Trying to cover off his teammate, but just not really having the best of luck. The res now enacted and just gets out of there for phase. All four alive, crucially for D plus Kia. You know, if you get the best of luck as well, you could win some PMDUI special rewards over on the application. That crate is available from July 15th through August 15th. So make sure you snag them whilst you still can. That is a nice looking skin. Over towards the rest of the map though, D plus Kia winning out on that engagement phase, sent away. Tails between their legs, 71 points just behind that sixth place barrier. You know, that is really big news for them. Currently, they're still in that top six that would make it through to main tournament because Alpha 7 has already qualified. But either way, I think that they'd rather get some points here because the Infinity, BTR, they are not far behind. Only two points. It is very, very close in the middle of those tables. You do have a little bit of a drop off down to S2G and below. But that is still very, very quick to turn. It's just one big game and, and it's absolutely all over for them. But hopefully a little bit more luck in their future. Circle drops up north, which means that S2G are pretty central in Paradise Resort. You've also got Aegon XA8 up in Cow. We're going to have a good time. A wide split for R8. Coming off the back of the team deathmatch victory, going to be feeling nice and warm on a split near the Western Bridge, near Tatmok as well, controlling a lot of territory. DRS on our screens, we talked a lot about this team, man, and I think it's because they have been so phenomenal. Obviously overshadowed by the last game yesterday by Vampires. Hard to beat that type of thing where they just shoot up to 143 points at the end of the day. And it was all eyes on DRS for quite some time. And I think that Vampires were getting a little bit jealous of all the ascension. So redirected the eyes onto them. But coming today, DRS have certainly secured themselves a very strong second place. GG. Gaming Gladiator. Um, G Gladiator is behind them. 94 points currently. They're not too far behind that second place, but they are more in the running for teams to overtake them. Ooh, that is unfortunate. Both players getting rattled off the back of the moped. Papar and Yuhai both falling down. Nothing really to do about that. And there's Exus pulled them short. Now it's just Genfos and Alkev. So they have not fielded Ryzen again. No, I, I think that's the smart choice, honestly. Lapa had done so much, and it was a bit of an odd decision to take him out of the running yesterday, considering how much he was doing for the team um, to get Ryzen back in the mix. And I think maybe that's just a test to see, can Ryzen bring things back around? I think for a guy that has such a good pedigree as well, as, as well right, where he's had such a strong performance in the past, and he's been trying to get back into the game as much as possible after a long hiatus, um, I think testing him out to see if he can maybe shake things up, not a bad idea, but I think right now with BTR being in ninth place, I think you have to go for the consistent roster, the one that worked on day one. Right now, down to two players. It's not a good start for them, John. Far from it. They have not had the best of times. Ninth place, we were talking about how close it is for that seventh place spot. This is absolutely one of the teams that is in contention for it. So to kick off with... A team being cut in half is not good news. The flip side of that is that FaZe have also lost three players. So now it's just the infinity to lose a couple and maybe they're back in uh, the same mix as those players. 
So this is a nasty spray down coming from the trick there. Already throws the guys from Bigatron at loop. As Lapa also goes down, as well as Yuhai. So probably the, the two worst players you want to be leaving the lobby instantly. Two most consistent guys down to now just Gen Foss. Really pack things back together again and get moving because he has been sort of the fixer of a lot of awkward moments with some very good clutch grenades on their side. Um, but again, now he's going to have to face the brunt of any force coming their way. S2G, 10th place right now, 59 points. The guys on the desk, Seven was talking about how they want to see a little bit of a resurgence coming through from S2G to redeem themselves into that final day after coming off from PMDC itself as those champions. We want to see a little bit more from these guys. And I think with the circle centering right up on them over towards Paratazor, it's a great chance for them to earn some points. We saw yesterday Vampires, I think they got around about almost 30 points in a game, right? Which is absolutely huge. Now, if S2G could do something similar, have a very strong game, a lot of eliminations, that sends you directly up towards that sixth place spot. So it's not as far as it might seem. It's very volatile right now. When you're dealing with sixth place type positions for qualification, it is always going to be volatile until you reach if you're looking at the number of gate matches in the set, right, you're looking at getting up towards 30 for it to start to be a little bit more consistent. But until that point, it is absolutely game to game changing. Uh, so you do need to be constantly getting as many points as possible, maximizing every single opportunity, wherever those opportunities present themselves. Not only that, but denying points also becomes very, very important. Sometimes you will see, and in fact, we have seen teams uh, or players left in second place, just jumping out into the blue, going down to the play zone instead of giving that point across to their opponents in order to reduce the overall points getting entered against them on those overall standings. You also see mollies being dropped under those players as well for a similar reason. So it is absolutely crucial wherever you can maximize everything. I think right now at the start of the day for some of these teams down towards that 10th and below, your Sandhawk right now is very important because you want to start the day off strong at accruing those points. It's really going to be maybe too little too late as we get through the day towards, you know, fourth, fifth, and sixth matches to be able to bump those points up as much as you need. You need that great start, right? Uh, that great run up, in which case you can just start consistently getting points because pressure is a big thing that comes into the minds of these players. If you're not getting those big points right off the get-go, um, you know, you're constantly looking for those big games. You start making mistakes. You start taking risks that you wouldn't normally take. But if you can get that massive game right now, keeps you a little bit calmer. You can look for those 10-point matches, which are a bit easier to go for. This is the second time Trick has pulled the same trick, and it's found another player over towards Vampire. BTR suffered to this similar rotation earlier on, and Mazexis is being cheeky right now on the northeast side of boot camp. They haven't paid as much as BTR did, but still losing a player really far from ideal. Alpha 7 have been running rings around Falcons uh, for for a little bit. They took out that back line first, and now they've encircled them fully. Not even a knock sent back the way to back towards Alpha 7. Yokohama... Donos Varel may be looking for a third party here, but there's really nothing more to do. The heals can start to come through. They are back at full force. Level 3 helmet for Revo as well, so even if he's peeking over, it's not really going to be instantly punishable. Yeah, I think the difficulty with A7 is when they get into a good engagement that they feel confident in, and we see them go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these teams in gunfights, they are very good at cleanly finishing off teams. Uh, a lot of times you'll see them take little to no casualties, hardly any damage. The side of steps oh. up, but can't hit that shot. It was practically free from behind the desk. No surcharge involved, but finally oh. Silas grabs that initial knockout. This is really important for them against Yangon Galacticos. Razi is there on the crossfire to slow down any approach to Silas' position, but they're not pushing for it. Super Andrew goes down as well, and S2G are good on this hold. Hamzi drops out for that heal, Romeo. And Murnat now left standing for Yangon Galacticos. The nade from Kelsey to lead the charge around the corner. And Razi to follow it up with the shotgun in hand. The UMP, no match for it. Silas lands what he's looking for. And Murnat now last standing. The Yangon Galacticos try and move into Paradise Resort, but they are swiftly evicted. Sent away at the door. 
this is very unfortunate. I mean, Silas, Silas had a gift for the first player, refused it immediately, but he was quite insistent as he came around the corner. DBS finally connects. But this is what you want. This is what S2G was looking for. Clearing out some space down towards Paratazor. Play around from this area. Get that big game going. And three eliminations right now is quite important for themselves. Now, with 18 teams in the lobby, it does allow you to get more eliminations during these games because there is just more players to go after. So for S2G, starting with three does open up a game for a lot more. Now, they are right down towards the southeast side now. So a little bit on the edge. It's slightly difficult to play around with Tatmok. Towards that north side, we've seen a lot of teams win from this position. Currently, I8 are holding that one down. In the meantime, Gladiators holding on the western bridge and Vampire are slowly but surely careening in their direction. Send away, I think the scout has been quite successful there. Playing with three, remember, Vampire lost a player to the camp from Mazexis, but getting to this compound would be great news. Unfortunately, BTR have their remaining duo who also lost out to Mazexis oh uh, playing on this position, but now R8 have got the bees and the TDM wasn't enough. Now they're trying to put that final nail into the coffin, keep them from rising. Ravenclaw goes down as Prestige lands the crossfire shots. The smoke's not going to save you as the flush comes through as well. So, Vampire on two. Make that one now active as Prestige lines up for another. Schwepp, the last player standing for Vampire. It's a treacherous rotate they've made. The hills might have been a better opportunity, but now Gladiators have that position. And they will be executing with four towards the top of those tables. Remember, DRS and Gladiators, the teams on the chase for the Vampire top spot. I think Mizex has caused such massive problems for several different teams there, particularly Vampires, because they delay the rotation quite a lot. And we know that Vampires typically get towards Circle quite late. Um, it's just early enough, though, right? It's just early enough for Vampires to make, to make their way in. But when you're delayed like that from Mazexis, suddenly you have to figure out a new rotational path. By that time, a lot of other teams have already swung their way in, and R8 was already set up. So for Vampires, they were desperately looking for a rotational path, a place to stay, reside, and there was just nowhere to go for them. Very on, unfortunate. On this stage three circle shrink, uh, we did see Yokohama Donuts Varel move in quite swiftly to the compound that they currently hold, which is very, very central, just out to the east of Lumbyard, uh, where we say, where we have said is a very powerful position to be able to hold in circles like this. I would say similarly powerful for Yokohama Donuts Varel to be able to maintain that space. Although that is something we saw them struggle with a little bit over on Miramar, hopefully on Sandhawk, it's going to be a little bit better for them. DRS, find that opening in the circle over on this eastern side. They are very much late rotators. But they found that position. It's very important to get that. And immediately finding themselves an initial pickoff over towards Alpha 7. Now open to Root to get towards this compound. This is so well done from DRS. Really quick scouting coming through from Killer. Currently the highest damage in the lobby from this guy. And you see exactly why. Immediately moving in towards the knock unit. And there's only two players there. Alpha 7 are split. And with the ridge line being as it is, there's really no backup. You just have to give up this position, give up the player. There's no sight lines that can be executed on from Carrillo uh, further up north and Mafioso even further up the way. This is pretty close by to Revo though. They did actually get the res there, okay. I thought the retreat, the retreat was just a full give up and maybe DRS have read into this as well. But with the DBS in the grass, Revo has a real opportunity to cause some problems here. Even on the low health bar that he has, Five first aids. They might have isolated that. Wants to go for the fight instead. Doesn't even need to heal. Drops back and hits the deck instead. Yeah, that was uh, that was uh, gonna happen sometime or other, but could have been a little bit more hairy. DRS control the situation. Meantime, there's a massive push coming through from the gladiators, and it goes horribly wrong. Luckily, they're able to get a little bit of clap back, but. I think that's down to just two players remaining as they headed over towards this northern compound. It was one hell of a send. They're holding over towards this western side. Somehow, some way, they've actually managed to get through. I think they got a couple of eliminations off the back of that. Just the one, in fact. So if they go down here, it'll be a pretty poor finish for them. 
Rez onto Mekuk. It's Sune on the staircase. Has got the shotgun. Forwards for Bensu and an eight downstairs. Is going to do the job, but sent back to sender. A lovely little pop-up. And the Infinity IQ squad can rest easy for the time being. Three players, though, from the north side and Cal. They are in the circle. They'll have to hold out a little bit longer. Alpha 7 playing on with three on the east side, playing in the shadow of DRS. The DRS found themselves a decent position now with third place and first place out of the game. Great time for DRS to extend their lead a little bit. And for D plus Kia, who have four members, this is a game that they can certainly excel in. They're over towards that northeast side. They have a compound to play with, albeit a very small one. It's better than nothing at this point in time. And I think D plus Kia will be happy to kind of try solidify their position in that top six. They certainly can do. They've shown us that they are a very good team when it comes to playing central. Forest has absolutely wowed us yesterday. Rio and Senotex are on the inside. Facing off against the needs from Ali. Sneaks another one around the edge. Doesn't really do too much. Carrillo cooking one of his own and pops it out the door frame. The burn is good. We saw how effective that is on these wooden floors. But Carrillo just manages to dodge around the corner and will stay away from the spread this time around. Ali falls and I code with him. You know, Molotovs are coming very handy here on Sandnock and I love that we're seeing much more usage come out of them. We saw it used massively well over towards the Gladiators because it spreads on that wooden floor. On the second floor forces them over towards the staircase. The players push from underneath. A nice cheeky nade is thrown in. And there's nowhere else the gladiators can go at that point. So it's very, very well done to confirm that. And that's what you want to do a lot of times. You want to eliminate as much variance as possible. If you can force two players into the worst scenario and get away with just a knock, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Circle heads down towards that south side, though. And we talked about S2G. Now we'd like to see them do really well. You know what, John? Ten eliminations speaks for itself. This is their chance to jump up into the top six and get their spot over towards the main tournament next on the cards. Jen Foss on the inside with the DBS. There's only one player left for BTR, but you can't let him go. And another shot. Last one to find it. Might be able to eliminate Ilgan XI8 fully, but no. They're just going to give up on the players on the inside. Allow these flushes to come through for... Shots in the chamber with six in the back pocket. It's still enough to handle a player. Really well done. And I Alpha mean, seven. IA were over towards Tap Mock in the first place. A nice nade goes through, but that would be just it now. But yeah, DRS completely explode Alpha 7 as they try and get away from this spot. This is a gorgeous grenade. You can already tell. Oh. Finds a knock and an elimination. Getting those flushes down as well. And finally, Mazexis, the thorn of this lobby, removed for the time being. DRS now turning their attention to SEM9, who have a very central position. DRS continue their march over these hillsides with all four of them alive. It's very difficult to slow this team down. S2G from the south might want to do so, but wanting to and executing on that want is two very different things. Next circle shift coming in very shortly. We squeeze up towards that northeast side and DRS now have a real good opportunity. S2G, who have been a bit down their look, and DRS, who have been on the rise, they most likely will clash at some point, because I think for S2G, crossing this road, heading over towards the eastern side, is the most ideal situation. A lot of teams thought this was going to head over towards that mark, so we'll be moving down from that northwest side. So I think if S2G assumes that we'll see a lot of teams towards the west, they'll likely try and sweep east. Nice shots there from Hamzy to pick up the points and two more sent into the S2G coffers. This is unreal. Really, really solid stuff. Right now, they are looking pretty good to get close to the top six if uh, the Infinity IQ squad can stay in this one. They've got seven eliminations already and get more placements on board. They should be able to fend them off for the time being, but S2G definitely with a bid to the top of the tables. If they go down here, will be drawn a little bit shorter than they would have liked, but still a great entry to their record. Razy very, very Chante. low. Nades just pouring on in from DRS, bursting perfectly. And S2G, defending world champions, getting put in their place downhill by DRS, who have been on a tear for themselves. Some unbelievably good grenades coming through from DRS at the moment. Hamzy G has to support 
And Silas will have to move out. Has to hit these initial first shots. Gets Delta off the rock at the start. Moves over towards the smoke. This is really well done. The fact that he's moved this far up is quite incredible, to be honest. Only one Molotov. He will be expending it here. Delta backed off the rock, as you said, crucially timed for that push potential. Across to the rock for Hamzi as well as the northern side starts to tidy itself up. Yokohama Donuts, Varel trying to stay alive as four with Infinity IQ out ahead of them. Tamzi G spotted behind the tree. Will not have the cover necessary. Now just one player left for S2G. On their heavy fragging run, 12 on the game. I mean, despite everything, even going down in fifth place here, this is a really good match for S2G to start catching up to get into that top six. Silas will just crawl alongside with the blue at the moment. DRS looking to move further in. R8 has lived a long time. That TDM gave him a lot of confidence coming into this one. Yokohama Donuts, they have a struggle bust of a rotation to come out of. A DRS just Ooh. about clipped Kazimaru, but he might be in cover, no. Does not have that luxury. Ozzy-san is forwards missile, left out in the cold here as Bensu gets spotted, flushed as well. Silas finally taken down. So that's S2G and Infinity IQ both eliminated. The shrink once more goes towards R8, but DRS looking to try and keep this one going. This is a team that could definitely vie for the top spot. Yeah, taking home that 125 grand for a Nepali team, that'd be a real big result for them. Playing on the outer edge has not been easy. They're in the blue for a long time. They found a strong position to start working their way through, and they immediately exploded from the blue. Slapped Alpha 7 across the face. Got rid of them out the lobby. Now working towards R8. Final circle approaching soon. R8 currently have a strong position in terms of having buildings to play around with. So R8's having to drop these smokes. So a DRS to allow them to get further in. Ooh. First nade is great from Prestige. Now just three players. No chance at a res here, John. That warm up going well for R8. Threat onto Giante's position as well, but Killer's crawling ever closer with the DBS. Giante opens to Ragnarok, finds a second on the swivel, but the team are dropping as well. Prestige around the edge with SK Ton trying to stay alive, but Giante falls next. And it's R8 to claim Sanhok a chicken dinner. They are warm, they are ready. And they put points on the board. Finishing that game as all four players as well, with just one player going down right that last second. Taking the TDM into the first match of the day. An incredible result for R8 here. The crowd goes wild for them. But DRS, great job to them. Really, really strong result. I think they struggled to get across that zone. They had to go up against a lot of fearsome squads. An S2G that's finally warmed up too. And they dealt with them very well. But so much utility expended by that team by the end. And the fact that Gante is able to crawl up, get some initial knocks. If they didn't get that first grenade over towards DRS, that could have been a very, very different story. But well done to R8 to take that game. Absolutely. Very well marshaled as well, keeping all the teams on the west at bay, uh, whilst the east and south kind of handled themselves and forced those fights. Good results for teams like... Uh, who, who are we talking about there? We talked about Alpha 7, who did have a pretty solid fight against Falcons before they kind of just got completely bombarded First out of there. 15-minute team, telling you. Okay, well, yeah, to be fair, they didn't really put up the records they were looking for. It's S2G, though, that's the headline for me, in terms of that return to a little bit more power blank. Yeah, 12 eliminations is great. I think that takes them uh, with elim elimination points alone towards that 70 mark. That's very much in reaching distance. And we said right at the beginning of the game for S2G, they need to get a good start. They absolutely do. Try to pick things up because we've only got five matches left blank. Time is running out for these teams to get to the top six spots, to get to the main event. And it's R8 to take that first step in the first match. They got that Alan Walker buff, man, taking him down in the TDM <laughs> and now able to take down the lobby here, getting them some much needed points because they were sitting down towards the very bottom of our leaderboards with Maximum and Seven. A, uh, a good strong start out of them, but to be fair, not only them, S2G yep. having a great game as well. Yeah, finally, a lot of eliminations. We said it, we want to see them finally tar try and take control of their positions, which here no one was really able to take away Paradise Re of Resort from their spot.
though i do wish uh, we did see them cross the road because i feel like there was a very high chance this could have been not only elimination heavy yeah maybe also chicken dinner which that would have been perfect to put them back in the race to make in top six i'm with you max I, i'm not gonna nitpick too much on their performance i'm kind of just happy that we we're gonna even we a chance points. to talk about <laughs> SG, and i'm pretty sure we'll get a chance to talk about them even more but yeah the eliminations were there they were able to de defend paradise of sword like you said a win would have been nice but didn't happen it's okay. I'm actually impressed they were able to be as good taking that fight versus Sen 9 after they crossed. Like, they were not in a position where they were truly in control of the terrain, yep. and yet they were able to just upset them because I think it's them working with R8 with to R8, some extent, yep. and Sen 9 were just completely overwhelmed. Uh, but yeah, good fight from them, and I, I hope that can continue. Seems like the buff from that game from R8 did pretty good too. So yeah, yep. some teams that we needed to see step up have finally got a good result here. Yeah, let's take a look at the match rankings here and so many points they got as well as the likes of S2G, DRS, and a couple of other teams out there as well because these points are gonna extremely matter considering we only have five matches left here in the All-Star event until we actually head into our main event and not before we find out which six or seven teams will be joining us into that. So we're going to see RA extremely high up there. I mean, the fact they're able to go up against DRS like that and beat them head to head was impressive. Uh, I do wonder, though, S2G, would they have been able to win that match? I mean, obviously, we'll go to a little bit, actually. We'll, okay. we'll save that for now. As we see 22 points coming in for RA and then DRS at 15. Yeah, happy to see that DRS has maintained that aggressive nature we witnessed yesterday, right, Seven? We've yep. seen a lot more presence from them. And actually really smart from a few teams that I actually noted. DRS, Alpha 7, Ica, three teams actually that understood the Eastern Coast is very empty when it comes to drops. I think you have Alpha 7 and Ica drop in there, yep. and they fully understood that this circle is great because it's finally not on the Gladiator's yes. Island. So let's just hug the Eastern Edge, and we have really easy entry points, but DRS's high ground was really what set them apart. Talking about Gladiators, this is what happened when they don't end up getting fed that circle, right? Only one point with a team that ends up... Uh, I, I felt like they were rotating a little bit too slow in Sandhawk. They were doing things a little bit too slow, and it kind of showcases here perfectly with the amount of points that they were able to get. And going back to what you were saying there with Alpha 7, I mean, at one point we were watching it, and I was like, hold on, Max. Where did the Alpha 7 go? And they were so far to the east that we couldn't, even, we didn't even get a chance to see them on that map. It's good to see that Alpha 7 was able to take advantage of this circle, one that is close to where they usually land. And it's good to see that they were actually able to back it up with some elements as well. They were not ready for DRS to push up, that's for sure. Yeah. Like the moment they came up, DRS and Alpha 7 were like, oh, we don't want to get involved in this. Just went back into the compound and just tried to chill, but they had to move later. But I think it comes down to DRS being so, being so good at being aggressive when they need to be, right? They knocked down Rebel and they were like, okay, this is our opening chance. And all of them, just the synergy within that team right now. All of them decided to push, get those eliminations, and make make A7 back yeah. off. And from the high ground, especially punishing all the teams that were rotating late across the road, and the moment you have that high ground, there's no way you're going to be yeah. taking it away from DRS. Well, I'm going to bring up a phrase that I've said a couple of times now. Flash in a pan. S2G, do you think this is a flash in the pan at them, or do you think this is the momentum they're going to be able to carry throughout the rest of the day? Oof. Ooh. I don't well, know. you got to put us on the spot. It's uh, just one game is the one. Yeah. We even made, I was talking about them. I mean, we only seen one game out of them. And once again, they, see, they show us one game. I have to yeah. wait. I, I think I have to wait to see what's going to happen here in the next Aaron Girl because it's too early to tell the... There were stuff that, like you were saying, if we actually start nitpicking, if we don't just, if I don't just go based on, okay, yeah, you know what? It's good to see that SCG finally able to get some elims, finally able to get some placement points. We're finally able to get a chance to talk about them. I need to see what they're going to be doing here in the next couple of Aaron Yeah, the thing is also, this is where they drop. This is yeah. Paradise Resort. It's where True. they drop. They didn't move pretty much this entire game. What if they had to move? I don't think they're going to get as many eliminations. So I want to see them in control of a game where the circle is not coming their way and they actually have to fight four positions in circle yep. and actually try and aim to get the win. So it's a good start, but I need to see a little bit more effort put behind the game. I think they set themselves up great, though, to at least strike within the top yeah. seven, within the top six, depending on where Alpha 7 ends up being. They were really good at zoning Paradise, which yes. I want to see that translate in different games. Yep. I think S2G kind of unlocked the power of the Honor Magic 5 Pro, uh, powered by Snapdragon 8, Gen 2, and Honor self-developed GPU, my boy, with Turbo yeah. X. I think oh they unlocked boy. it. I think they figured things out. And now this is going to be the start of them dominating the lobbies. But we still obviously have three Erangels to come up. We have two Miramars as well beyond that. But let's maybe deep dive in to R8 stats, their player stats. We got to obviously give them some sort of love here, right? Yep. We've, we've, we've talked about them. Not in a positive way, necessarily. <laughs> That's what we're going to see in here. As you have Ragnarok Oof. actually going to lead the charge here with 519 damage. But again, team effort. Yeah, I mean, Ragnarok has been able to do really good this game, but Prestige for me is the player that pretty much throughout the years that we've known, RA Esport has been one of the standout players, him and Eskaton typically, but really Prestige is the Skuton. big standout player. Skuton. 
Scuton. Sounds like a DBS sound, actually. Sounds, like, a, sounds like he's French. Scuton. 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 Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's just you. Yeah, maybe just me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Prestige was up there, and the moment they're going close, Ranger was good. But they're sweeping play from northwest of Paradise Resort. There were a reason why so many teams struggled to make that transition from the south to the northern side, and really because of that, they were able to pick a few limbs here and there. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that ended up hindering the Sem9 leapfrog over S2G, right? We thought, okay, maybe that might be a great position, but then once S2G was able to lock down on them and RA was able to lock down on them, it ended up being a, a bad area to be. And I really appreciate that RA was willing to just coexist with S2G for such a long time, because at any point, they had perfect chance to just try to strike him, especially when S2G was able to fight against the sexes. They could have tried a third party that they waited for the right moment. Well, I do kind of worry, though. I mean, obviously, that's our final Sandhawk of the yep. All-Star stage, so they're not going to be able to depend on this to be a strong map for any of these teams. But then going into three Erangels, it's, it's obviously going to be the most played battleground for all of these teams, or, or should be, unless they've been training in some sort of chamber where time slows down. You never know. Oh. But it's going to be hard. I mean, the thing is, not only do they have to kind of replicate that performance here on the first Erangel of the day, but then potentially the next two. I mean, they are getting close to that bubble. They're getting close to pushing themselves into top six. But it doesn't get easier from here on. You need, you need to be doing good on Arangel, of course, otherwise. But it's half yeah. of your matches in the All-Stars. If you're not able to perform on that battleground, like we've seen so many teams, it's not going to work out. I feel like some other teams are going to start feeling the pressure, too. I mean, G Gladiators, where have they been? I feel like they have a big slowdown yesterday. And here, now that the circle, we were talking about it, the circle didn't end up being on their favorite. They only end up getting one point here. What's going to happen going into the next Arangel? Oh, they're going to start feeling the pressure. I think I think G Gladiators will be able to come back, though. I think there will be a team that might end will end up being in the top six. More than that, I think we need to see a win from Gladiators. Yeah, yeah. They've been in so many situations where they got close to top five, actually a lot of podium finishes, but we haven't seen them go the extra mile to get those wins. Uh, we see the fragging power is currently present, but a win would definitely make me think that Gladiators are fully yeah. ready for the main tournament. Okay, well, you know what? Maybe Gladiators actually save them all for the main tournament. Maybe they're like, you know, we're gonna eat chicken dinners here. We're gonna do it, do it there. I mean, that would make no sense because there's 125 <laughs> grand to get for first place. Uh, but let's just really quickly head back to S2G again, because again, it's another team we've been very Hypercritical of, I think that's the best way to say it here. We'll take a look <laughs> at their player stats since last match and give them some love because again, this is a roster of players that we just know they're individually some of the best Turkey has to offer. We know what they can do in the past and Kelsey in particular, honestly, it's nice to see him kind of rise up because I mean, Kelsey has had so much popularity, so much said about him. I mean, we know him to be one of the strongest players in Turkey. Yeah, I mean, we know Kelsey and Hamsiji are the two fragging duos for the team. Of course, Razi did really well in PMGC Grand Finals. Yep. But these are the two main players, the banner men, I would say, even for S2G. And it hurts even more when you think about it, Seven, because we've seen the rise of this team from like when the synergy was not present, where Silas was giving all yeah. of that information, all of that knowledge to the team and how much they grew over the course of a year and a half to now kind of dwindling down and struggling to make those performances meet expectations. So hopefully they can still get there, but it's a rough time. This could be the match that they needed, right? We need, we, we're hopefully. talking about a, a team need, yeah, a, a spark, whether it's from a player, whether it's just from a match, this might be the right time for them to be able to just carry that momentum going into Erangel, <laughs> even though, yeah, they didn't really have to rotate. They were able to defend, like we were mentioning, they were able to defend Paradise Resort so well, whether it was Mesexus, whoever it was, they were able to just position. And then afterwards, even whenever the circle shifted away from Paradise Resort, they were able to just place themselves in a great, great position to take the fight and end up getting the match. I wonder, though, if S2G keep performing well like this, Will you get vampire leg? No, 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 no. You go we back don't down. want you in the main <laughs> tournament. We're going to drop on you and potentially knock you out. And that's the pressure. That's what happens when you underperform the beginning of the tournament and you go into the final day trying to get back in towards that top six or whatever it might be to qualify into the next stage of the tournament. I hope they're aware of it. Realistically, I don't think it's going to happen, but I would love to see it. I don't think it even has to be vampire. Like, so yeah. I think after the next two matches, I think you have two, three teams that are pretty much almost 100% secure to make in the main tournament. So it's not just vampire's decision. It might be gladiators. It might be other teams at the top. So I would tell you the S2G, if they start performing, so the way we saw in PMGC, maybe they're going to paint a target on their back. And right? I hope that's the case. I hope I hope that DRS, I hope that some of the other teams do paint that target and actually start hunting them down. Well, let's find out with John on and Blake once again as we kick off our second match of the day. With the plane already in the sky, we're going from Quarry up to Stalba for match number two. Match number 13, hopefully. Luckier for some than others and their chase for those top six spots. 
Vampire immediately out, down towards Primos. We know that they like that spot. It's where they will make their first stand. Not really much options elsewhere for them, considering, you know, you just take your original drop spot in this case. Circle might head all the way over towards that eastern side, but there's still definitely positions to move from. Now, there has been some differences in terms of those points in a big way. Uh, some teams are catching up slightly. Killer, up to 6,221 damage now for DRS. He is blasting out of his mind. And honestly, DRS are lucky to have that guy. Stays true to the name, that's for sure. Absolutely pivotal, uh, his performance for the roster. I mean, look at look at the knocks. Second place is nine knocks behind him. That is absolutely insane. Almost a 30% difference uh, between him and the players behind him, both of whom are from Gladiators. Really, really great stuff coming through. And DRS, as you say, lucky to have such an asset. Massively, he has just been so good time and time again for DRS. I think honestly, you know, in their little interview, they said, you know, they had great synergy within the team. You can tell that's the case. And it never really feels like anyone on that team is really slacking too much or dragging their feet. Everyone is really putting the numbers. I think there was even one point last game where we went over to DRS. Each player had two a limb. Everyone putting in the work. It's great to see. Falcons on their initial rotate over on that south side. Two apiece in the vehicles. There's hardly any teams over towards Milta, Farm, Shelter, Prism, Mansion, Lepovka, Milta, Power. Everywhere is free on this side of the map, so easily taken up. The moment, though, the way the circle's set up, you're not going to see too many teams heading down that way. So we're going to have quite a cramped first circle, which is great to see. I'll tell you what else is pretty cramped. The amount of action in the special rewards for the PUBG Mobile Event Center. Blank, you can head on over there in your app. And it's also pretty packed in the PMWI crate. You can grab a couple of skins there available from July 15th, so in two days' time, to August 15th. Uh, so you can have that whole month to grab yourself a crate. But don't waste any time. Make sure you get in there as soon as possible. Sure, man. Pick up that crate. Make sure that there's nothing in your current inventory that's going to be cramping your style when you head into those games. Sem9 currently on the bikes. Now they're sending it onwards. A lot of teams are heading over towards that eastern side now, like looking uniform. for positions. Yeah, the uniform's lovely, beautiful to see. Very visible, I would say, although. <laughs> um, but definitely strikes a figure. On the south side, though, FaZe are coming into contact with Falcons, but I think that the Falcons would rather just send onwards over towards Milter Power. DRS, similarly, they're on their rotation down towards that south side. Delta. Riding on through, leading the charge for the rest of the roster. Still on that chase. So Vampire looking to defend their title at the top. In Primorsk split up to Quarry, their standard 2-2. With Circle on the west, they have got those Western, those Western roads uh, available. A lot of split drops around these Gatka fields as well. Rozok spread across by S2G all the way up to Ruins. Yeah, Glad Gladiator is really struggling to find themselves a, a good drop spot. I think they've been all over the place on this map so far. We saw Severny drop versus Mazexis did not go well. Now they're heading down towards Hospital. And I think this is free because you've got FaZe playing Crate and South George. Hospital is a very viable spot to play in. Uh, there wasn't anyone there in the first place, so Gladiator is happy to pick up this position. Gives you good rotational routes outside of here. A lot of times Alpha 7, FaZe Clan might get caught up if they try and head south too quickly. You might even see FaZe Clan heading up towards Box Compound and down past Rodok. So for Gladiator, this is fairly decent. Onzen is in the mix at the moment and could get picked off here, John. They're not careful. Could be, could be. Seemingly safe for now. I mean, the Gladiators also have that advantage of going, if they're going towards that hospital split drop, of being quite close to their original drop of North George, so they can, as you said, there are rotational paths available to them, but not only that, there are familiar rotational paths available to them. If you want to divert up north towards those Everest foothills compounds, they've played from there countless times, right? So they have that information. The main difference is having to cross up north without that foothold already existing. So if the circle does go up there, it could be a little bit more tricky. Yeah, it's uh, it's not completely back to basics, but it's much more familiar 
and other places like Severny, which we don't like to talk about. <laughs> we don't talk about the Severny days. We don't talk about those days. But we take a look at the leaderboards, though. You can see them on the right-hand side of your screen. Sixth place, 85 points. Beneath that, 80 and 74 points to who, John? It's S2G, who have really brought things back up to speed. That is a fantastic start of the day to come out with. I think from there, if S2G can continue getting some pretty stellar performances, they're already over towards the south side of Sunken, which is very much within the circle. You know, benefiting from these circles at the beginning, that's fine, but it's what you do with it afterwards, which counts. And right now, they are trying to get as many points on board. So, didn't exactly go for the 100% win play on that last game, but getting that many eliminations is just fine. You know, 10 yeah. eliminations is equal to a chicken dinner, and they had 12 of them, a fifth place. Bonza, that gets you enough points to keep sending yourself upwards. And there are some of these teams towards that position, like Infinity IQ, although have some standout moments, I think S2G, with the absolute boatload of experience they currently have on board, they can bring it back today. Hopefully, and right now, they are only six points behind that bubble, remember, for qualification. With Alpha 7 in the top six, it pushes that bubble down one place to that seventh spot. So, as you were saying before, Infinity IQ, that is their target, and they will be looking to hound that doggedly down. Although the Falcons and Alpha 7 still also within striking distances. As we've said before, the word of the day, volatile around this bubble. 100%. I think phase a lot of their points have come through some very opportunistic third parties on their side. They do get quite caught up in their rotations, but a lot of times just wait for two teams to clash and then jump in on top of that. And more often than not, both those teams go down, which gives FaZe a lot more time because that clears a big space out of the lobby. Right now, they're making a fairly decent rotation, in my opinion, though, over towards the north side of Everest and down towards those compounds just underneath. R8 currently have taken control of that. So they've got two players underneath Everest, two players still down towards Gatka. Now, I think that's slightly overzealous considering the amount of uh, actual available compounds in this area. I do think that the current compound that two players up to the north are holding that is going to be very much wanted by a lot of teams. I think holding it with two for this long, slightly dangerous. FaZe looking to head up Everest for the time being, seemingly. The, uh, the factor that's afforded to that 2-2 two -two split from R8, of course, is that you've got that eastern buffer from S2G. And now with FaZe not opting to push into the compound yet, we'll say yet, because they might try and roll down the hill, depending on... Uh, where this circle shifts, they have got that buffer up to the north. So if Alpha 7 try and cross, if Mazexa swing through and try and move down south, they could be able to curtail it. But it looks like S2G might even be able to scout that out. So it is overzealous. I think you're right. If the teams around them stay put, it's safer than if those teams start to get a little bit aggy. Yeah, it's the problem that occurs because there isn't that many huge compounds in this area and this is one of the best ones right it's a really nice compound to play around with you get covered by everest itself and it looks like ra is going to try and regroup as fast as possible in the meantime vampires have rocked up in a similar location to the gladiators who have been hanging around this area for some time now tixie sends out there's a player off in the distance from ravenclaw and he's heading directly towards them in the u.s it's not that fast and in comes that push from face it's what we were talked about earlier and our rate have just held this split for far too long. They had the opportunity to regroup, but now they're going to have to fend off phase. It's going quite well on the door frame for Ragnarok, but only two found. And when you're playing as a two, you cannot afford to go for that. It looks like Gladiators are embroiled with Vampire as well. And R8, I mean, they regrouped too late, right? As you said, they tried to move up. Prestige now with the UMP in hand. Not really going to have the efficacy that Ventura's has with this DBS, but fortunately, there's only a slur of HP to contend with. Phase stay strong, however. But who can roll up? Mazexus looking to put nades on into the fray. This is what I'm talking about, man. Everyone wants this compound. It's so good in this early game to hold out into. It gives you a lot of position to duck behind. If you start getting naded, you can go towards the basement side. Alpha and seven. also, just the stage is great. Alpha 7 on the top as well. Mazexis move in. Will clean up phase. So they suffer to the third party themselves. Now on Zen underneath with the rest of his teammates. Coming down these stairs, Mazexis is going to be a little bit dangerous. But I think that's another team now rocking up on that top side. Looking for a little bit more. 
Got Gladiators pretty close by. Alpha 7 on the north as Mazexus takes the top floor. So four teams now with a factor in this fight. Trick launches a nade and catches Mello wanting. Neku moves on up in the meantime. Trick on the inside trying to cover off these door frames. They'll hear these vehicles circling. Gladiators yet to commit fully for this push, and Alpha 7 want to break out wider. Kitsune up on the top of the mountain, a threat. Onsen from the inside, oh lines one up, and more man's there as well. Three knocks sent to Mazexus as they try and go downstairs, but it's just going to be sent back. And another nade Meku. in from Meku slows the fight down to a dead halt. FaZe can recover. And Mazexus is gone. This is what we are talking about before. It's such a strong position in that basement to hold on as long as possible. And a lot of times it's the team above that will get third parties instead. So now they're living a little while longer. S2G does take a casualty, but they're able to send something back over towards Mafioso. Unlikely they'll pick him back up again. And Meku regroups the rest of his team. So not fully committing to this engagement. Western shift pretty hard on this circle over to the Gatka fields. Keeps the chopsticks in where, where uh, Vampire with Ravenclaw in that chopstick have got their foothold. Gladiators in a pretty solid position, but they are down to three. They were busted that way uh, by Vampire on the western side. Yeah, I mean, Tixie was just rolling up in the U.S. He saw the vehicles in front of him, and I think it was just a little bit too careless of him. Then again, the shots coming through from Vampire sometimes, we didn't get a good eyes on it, and it could have just been an absolutely unreal shot coming through from Ravenclaw, who has hit some massive long-range shots before. Absolute sniper of a player. Falcons trying to establish their line in. But a knock sent their way slows down their plans. S2G lose Hamzy and Silas. Leaving just Razy and Kelsey in action. Both on the inside, and they are in the circle on the northeast side, just southwest of Ruins. Yokohama Donuts Varel are going to be playing in the ditch, in the storm drain, at the end of the chopstick. These nades do just funnel themselves towards Yangon Galacticos' position, unless they uh, bounce off one of the trees. Yeah, sort of looked like it bounced off thin air, in fact, but that was <laughs> indeed very thick, gelatinous air that the bounce came off the back of. The grenade is not getting through there, apparently. I like Gladiator's position, though, holding on to that single compound. I think Vampire's over towards Gatka, strong spot. You do have those upstairs to play around with. Great need from S2G. Clean up when the Falcons plays. You do have that top floor for Vampire to play around with. It gives you a lot of scouting capability. The problem a lot of times is it's hugely difficult to hold down to the entirety of Gatka. Once you start getting one or two teams assaulting that same position, you sort of just have to back off towards the third story uh, in the corner of Gatka. So Vampires, they don't want this to be their singular approach into this game. They know that it's not massively likely to end down this way, which is why I do like Gladiator's spot. So much more easily defensible and not as a priority compound as something like the Infinity are taking over towards that northwest side, which more than likely will get assaulted by some teams looking for space. Two teams on the top of Everest, I could get Getting some shots sent their way by SEM9 out on the northeast side. I heard an Alpha 7 both trying to share the summit, but neither likely to be able to stay there for too much longer given that proximity to the edge of the circle. Infinity have Ravenclaw now to worry about on their south side. Those fields looking more and more treacherous by the moment. Next circle just about to come in. Yeah, it's not an easy circle to play. And I mean, if, if we move further wow. towards Everest side as well, it becomes slightly even more difficult. Okay. You do cut out around about 15% of the circle just from that slope up to Everest. You can find some little caves that you can go into, you know, pull the bear pelt around your shoulders and just hide out there like a survivalist. Uh, but you really will be playing the survivalist role. You're not likely to get too many more eliminations or even the win for that matter. But the fielded area for Gladiators, this is where we want to see a bit more from them because we've seen many times, and the deaths say this too, that they need to start taking shots at teams because they have clear sight lines over the field, and it looks like Vampires are going to go for the crash. They need to receive well here, John. 
Infinity IQ might even be able to get a couple of sightlines over this fight as well as Alpha 7. Good start to proceedings. Nade sent over to Sweat, but Kitsune goes down on a trade. Meku wants to push them back off this window to allow for this res to come through. Playing as three, you need every advantage you can get, but Kitsune goes down as Tony K seals the deal. Ravenclaw up high ground with the off angle. So important on this fight. It's forced Gladiators to play along this ridge line where they have a disadvantage in terms of those numbers already. Ooh. But that's what I was looking for. A third party shot coming through from Infinity IQ across the way. The backs of Vampire are exposed and it will slow them down on these pushes. They are down to two, but they have got a little bit of a lifeline. Alpha 7 as well from the top of Everest might be able to spot Ravenclaw. I think the fact of the matter is, is that the Infinity spot that's happening, they know now that their compound is just really not safe. And this is a really good one to take. It's towards the central arena. In the meantime, DRS have made a massive swing on the southern side up towards Mount Everest and are looking to take out players in this spot. Alpha 7 first to face. D plus Kia swept aside as Aegon XA8 try and leave from the chopsticks from those Gatka fields. As we're back on board with Gladiators trying to hold out. Killer did get knocked. Carrillo low, but rules is even lower. Will fall down first. And Alpha 7 looking good to try and hold the top of this. A two for one trade in terms of knocks right now. Another nade launched over by Revo, who's playing that point man for the roster. Delta close by. Giancy falls next. And just the one for DRS. Will their run be drawn short here? Yes, it will. Alpha 7 play with four eliminations on the card. A res available onto Santa Texa and Ikerd not pushing on just yet. Revo just drops Hellfire from above there. Just bullets raining down on the guys from DRS. Very difficult to get away from that, but I think he just wanted the fight to complete it as quickly as possible. Like we said before, clean engagements from Alpha 7. Quickly pulling out the wet wipes and getting rid of DRS from the top side of Mount Everest. And now they can focus over towards Ikerd once again. Looks like Vampires are trying to push further in towards where Gladiators are currently trying to hold. They'd like to get rid of them, so they can't capitalize on a third party that comes through to the Infinity who are waiting. Schweppes takes a huge amount of damage. This is very good for Meku, holding on for as long as possible close up. Tony K, no nades in hand. Playing around, just trying to Spot oh. the players near the window, Spectral. won't be so lucky. Nade around the edge, finds a lot of damage onto Meku. Tries for the drop shot, and there's no backup with the sight line blocked on the smoke. Matic falls second, and Vampire stay up as four. A nade was launched to that back line to clear out Matic, and the Gladiators are eliminated, not able to suppress the oncoming onslaught from the Vampires. And with that, Vampires cut off that sight line coming from Infinity IQ. They knew they had to do something shortly. They wait up, they get all those stims on board, and then they push in. Oh. S2G though, Ray Z still going strong. Absolute destroyer over in the PFG. Oh. And he finds another, not before he goes down to Aton, but what a defiant performance there from S2G. Ray Z comes in clutch. One versus three against BTR, a third party. Shot through the window, snuck in there to close down the run, but you're right, a phenomenally defiant play, as you so aptly put it. Vampire now with priority compound that once was Gladiators. They took down, they opened that gap in the armor for the Gladiators by eliminating Tixie, and they moved through and finished the job. Infinity IQ, I just think that they have made an odd play to hold in that area for so long. They saw the fighting happening. You know that this is one of the priority compounds in the map. You know, you just take that third party in that case and you just hope that it goes well and trust in yourselves to pull it off. I think vampires have done a marvelous job in terms of strategy and forward thinking. They spot that they take down the players of Gladiator earlier on. They take down Tixie. They understand the rotational path that's going to happen. They push them over towards this building. And then from Gatka, as soon as it heads towards that north side, they know they have an opening there. So they control the south and the north at the same time because they're confident to take that crash over towards Gladiators, understanding that they most likely will be three. Now the Infinity finally pulls the trigger, but I think it's too late. Vampire have very much established themselves in this position. And in fact, there's shots and knocks already out onto the field. Ferrari goes down with Falcons on that third party. They don't even fully commit to, co commit? Commit to this push. It's Alpha 7 now. Do you spot out a player from Vampires and take him down with a full flush? The good news for Vampire is that both DRS and Gladiators are down and out of this match, which means that everything from this point on is gravy on their point lead. However, they do want to maximize that. 
at every at every turn. We've spoken about how pivotal it is to get these points on board where you can. Now, Alpha 7 have build, been building up to a strong performance this entire time. What an amazing initial grenade. Those are hard to pull off. Straight around the corner, finishes to prevent the information on the peak. Doesn't get too much time to deal with it. And straight away looks over Got towards you height. So unfortunate bullets coming afterwards because he could have survived a lot longer from that spot. Raven though, it was a questionable play. I think running out from that side without clearing any of Everest or scouting it, considering he is the scout, probably <laughs> should know that there are going to be players up towards Everest side moving downwards. It just leaves them a little bit weakened. Phase Ike. takes down a bit more. I could out, and that'll extend them up towards that leaderboard. Nine eliminations so far found. Seventh place overall right now for Phase. A really important jump as well. Remember, we've yeah. spoke about it so much, this bubble. If they can keep this rolling, they might be in the money. It's the main event from this all-star stage, getting that qualification spot. Alpha 7, they've managed to make their way all the way down. They're still on that far side of the road and will have to go a little bit further. Vampire can stay in their compound, though, Blank. They can hold on. I think that if you are Vampire now, you gain some information, albeit losing a player that way. So it was Ravenclaw having to take bullets from the back to be right. I think there's guys behind us. So with that information, they most likely will wait for Alpha 7 to be forced in by the blue itself before they play their hand, uh, trying to maybe make Alpha 7 fight against Infinity IQ, force that engagement between, between the two teams because we're out into open ground after this. So Vampire has to make the most out of this situation where they still have the walls around them. They still have the windows to peek out from because they need to cause casualties to a lot of teams. Luckily, A7, I think, is realistically the only other team that's going to make it towards the end game with four players other than Aegon and A8. But they are taking a huge amount of damage so far. Ooh, Falak taken low. Blade also taken away. Very, very difficult situation for Aegon XA8. They've still got a whole chunk of points out of this game. A lot of value found. Shots over towards Mela to pick up yet another one from IQ on the south side. UZM and IQ. Three eliminations for UZM. Four for IQ. Falak down with six and Blade with four. Very, very solid entry. Yeah. I think they're about vampires, right? They, they've played a very good game so far. For Alpha 7, though, in a fielded finish, this is something that we will reiterate time and time again. Four players versus any other team that has less than them, it's almost a guaranteed victory off the back of that if you play things right. You just have more angles, more refrag potential. So if Vampire want a chance at winning this versus Alpha 7, they need to cut the numbers of that team. They're being really slow with pushing out as carefully as possible. It's less likely that they'll be able to force that engage engagement between them and Affinity IQ now because Alpha 7 is picking them apart. Point could go over to Vampire here. It's taken by Cenotex. Uh, both teams were looking out that way. Really important to be able to get that knock. Looks like Vampire opting to not pick up the DBSs for it's that late smart. game on, uh, on, on in these fielded finishes. Yeah, it's smart. What is the chance that you're going to be in DBS range in a field of finish? You're always going to be on either side of the circle. It's pretty funny, though, the fact that this engagement here probably would be great to have a DBS on board because the team that is most likely to be the biggest threat to you one. is right next door. Luke has equipped one of those. The buildings will be littered with those body boxes. We'll have plenty of them and in a plentiful supply. And you can keep one in the back pocket even in these fielded finishes. Just in case on one of your players, Alpha 7 looking to move through with Infinity further down the hill. Phase staying alive with Mormon out in the field, as is on Zen. We got moving through this smoke train. We'll get spotted. Be a maid is the thing to find it, but the point still goes over towards Carrillo. Nine eliminations now for Alpha 7. As Vampire still holding them out. And the impetus is on Alpha 7 to move here. Vampire are in the next circle. It's a difficult sightline to play around with oh, as man. Vampire. And there's little to no utility on side for them. Moving through this fielded area, smokes would have been ideal. 
but not having nades is crucial for Vampire because nades over this ridge side towards Alpha 7 who have to move towards Vampire would have been fantastic. The fact that they really lack that kind of utility is a really big deal. They're going to have to just go for a full-on gunfight. We saw Mafioso from Alpha 7 break up towards, Ever uh, towards the Everest side of these fields in order to push Mormon back from phase and allow them a little bit more leeway to go for this fight. You still have Kaidulan crawling his way forwards. Mafioso still worried about Mormon, so they need to isolate these threats and take care of them. The first one is dealt with, but Mormon is still there on a side swipe. Not really too much utility for Alpha 7 either. Revo might opt to just break out and leapfrog Alpha uh, Vampire fully. Right now, Alpha 7 is lacking on supplies. I thought it was bad for Vampires, but they've got little to no bullets remaining. Revo 40 in the mag, 18 remaining left over. But so is Schweppes. Good that this game has been absolutely dry on resources. And this is where having that secondary in terms of a submachine gun instead of the DBS is really coming into play. It's very, very smart from Vampire setting up for an endgame. That crate also a massive blessing. I mean, imagine finding an M249 in there. That's just... I think they picked up a Grozer, in fact. Ooh, could yeah. be even better. Yeah, yeah look at the that. Back. Excellent. Swap out that M4. Tony, plenty of ammo. <laughs> I see what I mean. They've this, got nothing left. This is such a stalemate between these two teams. For Shorts. Alpha 7 don't want to go ahead. They don't want to go into the sight like the Vampire. And Vampire are willing to just let them wait. Man, Schweppes is in such a dangerous position as well. But he needs to provide that information across. Playing around with this bush in front of them, which is likely to get sprayed out. I think Alpha 7 has played this game slow. Spots. Bullets are going to be a problem. And he's spotted in turn. UZM moves forwards with the cover. Can get the res onto IQ. The zone will crunch them in fairly soon. The first breakout is from Mafioso. And a position in the circle for Alpha 7. Meaning they don't necessarily have to go for the fight if they can make that cross. The thing is for Mafioso, if he gets that vehicle across, he might have actually found the resupply because he needs to support the team as they move in. Right, and for Vampire, they're going to have to crawl out way before Alpha 7 have to peek over this ridge side, which has provided them so much cover for so long. Flukov steps into the blue. It hits him very, very hard. Cool. It will do at this stage. Oh, Schwepp, he saw Senatexa. We'll see another as well, Vampire. They have to go for the fight, and Alpha 7 cut them down. The numbers advantage playing for them. You can see the ammo just go completely red. Revo has to go back to the DBSs. Aegon XIA, the duo, still needs to move north shore, but they've got way more resource. I think genuinely, Schweppes could probably crawl all the way in. There's no way these players have any kind of ammo to work with unless they pull them over towards this position because they need to resupply off these crates that are on the floor. Revo just has to get up close and personal with the DBS. This oh. is the killer. And UZM with this AUG, not many bullets left in that one. Groza comes out, Carillo still holding on. He could win this game, because Schweppes, just off the back of the fact that these players have nothing left in he the sees tank. Him. He sees him. UZM absolutely sees the player behind the tree. The backstop for Alpha 7 is spotted, and it's Schwepp to pick it up. He's got the Grozer now into a one versus two. Vampire to try and put another chicken dinner on the board. A nade goes long. It looks good. Schwepp just about dodging out the way. Gets back into cover and hits the deck. The spray goes wide for UZM. Grozer's it's on so the back close. line. IQ, oh, IQ brought very, very low. Schwepp trying to heal up with those stims. The more time he... the storm over on that eastern side versus phase clan this is going to be a record set thing left on board with that kind of circle where there's realistically no ability to go grab yourself some more ammo no one was dying inside these buildings to be able to get those loot crates jump really tricky stuff to navigate that open field and what a way to cinch it close as well. FaZe could not stand up to that push. Alpha 7 cut them down with the last of their resources. 
and they were bled dry from the top of Everest. Their descent was tumultuous, to say the least. And in fact, the open field position was what brought it home. Aegon I-8 take a massive record-setting chicken dip.